City of mine, how I love, how I love the city of mine. It never gets me down. City of mine, how I love, how I love the city of mine. It never gets me down. Yeah. I was born in the city. I was raised on its edges, my pop work is life when it's calm box up on love in its center If I could live here forever, think it'd be for the better I love the weather, even though it's fog 24-7 I love the people, this is city, I met all my best friends And I wanna thank every break, I wanna thank every entrance To every building that I step in, in this city of mine I owe you most my best moments in life See, I fell in love for the first time in Golden Gate Park I saw my first rap show at Great American Hall I used to beg my homies for a ride across the bridge to goof off And spend the whole damn day doing whatever we want Keek drove us down to Ice Place while we'd roll up a blunt And me and Jack would get stony, walk around and get lost Don't think I'll ever truly pay back all I was lucky to get Just by walking through the city, no, I'm a small part of this I never really had a place to call my own So I travel and I roam till I find that But I'm full of adventure so I wander and I venture And it's safe to say that really I don't mind that I book a flight to try to figure where my mind's at A spot where I don't spend no money just some time at I mix and mingle with the people till I learn a little I brought some weed and baby maybe we could burn a little She said you're funny, I said no I'm David and I left Sun shining, birds chirping, let me take a breath I'm headed to the city where my chance to make it best what people like to give a little then you take the rest i'm hoping one day maybe i can find a place to rest i fell in love with life and wonder where it take me next i like the hustle and bustle i fell in love with the fashion i feel the pulse of the city is moving me like a passion and it's mine We go way back, all the situation, circumstances Still we don't mind, steady going on I dance around the street lights Hey, I know every street sign Hanging around the block like If you are my friend, then you are welcome any moment What's up, peoples? Aloha. May the 4th be with you. Happy Star Wars Day. Coming straight out of Tatooine, it's my boy Doc Rock. Today we got a special... Oh, you know, this is hot. <laughs> Damn, that thing is hot. I resigned from the 501st because it's hot as oh hell. Anyway, gang, just wanted to say what's up, good morning, and how the heck are you? Today we got a dope show we got a guest on. I've been wanting to bring on the show forever, but I've been busy. I, he always busy. I mean, this dude is so busy. He's busy right now. He's probably doing extra stuff on the side while he's waiting in the green room. Um, but yeah, today we finally got the chance to get together, and I think it's going to be dope. So we're going to dive right in. What I want to remind you is if you're new around these parts, let us know. Let us know you're new in the community. Just type new or something in the comments so that the family, the Ohana, can welcome you into the fold. And if you happen to keep see this on replay, let us know you're watching on replay. If any questions come up from what you watch, drop your question in the comments, even after the fact, because I will come back and answer them. And that's just how it do. So without further ado, I want to bring on my guest today. The man is a public speaker. You see him all the time, just glowing up in the communities, both LGL and ECAM. 
uh, and you know, teaching people how to do stories, corporate facilitator, like all of the above. You guys know the man, the myth, the legend. We call the man Mr. RK3, you know, because he's named after the president's brother, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, RK3? How you doing? Hold on. I got to bring in... Come on. Be music, bro. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Bro, yeah, I love little, that. A little bit it's of so old school, old school 80s R&B hip hop feel. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. What's good? What's happening, Doc Rock? I don't know, chilling, boss. Good to see you. Let's see. Good to see you, man. I can't see you either. Let me let me make sure that there we go. I see you now. Yeah. All right, cool. I was uh, my eyes are still getting back to normal after wearing that hot helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm gonna get out yeah. the Vader helmet, put on the voice box, and the whole nine yards. But bro, that thing is hot. And it's messing my beard, yeah. making it hard to fit in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, what is happening? Hey, Valerie Singleton. Man, I know yeah. everybody shows up. You come around here, everybody shows up. You got came to the Keys Nation. Well, in the I don't know. Yes, good to see you, Mr. Lee. Always in there, man. You know, Lee, I appreciate you, bro. You've been cracking really hard on your content and getting your gate up. So, hey, I appreciate that. What's up, Mr. Love Joe? It. Good to see you here. Dr. Elo is in the building real quick. I see all of the family. Corey is here. What's up, Corey? May the fourth be with you. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, Kevin wanted me to do the whole show with that helmet on. Kevin, we have a sand around my, <laughs> my neighborhood. You high. Because <laughs> that train was hot, bro. It was super hot. <laughs> hey, Carlos, good to see you here, bro. Yeah. Thank you. We had this conversation the other day talking about like not taking yourself too seriously. And, you know, yeah. in order to, you know, I just want to connect with folks. Like I want you guys, I, I don't like it. This is so weird. Uh, this has been a problem. Not wanting to, I don't, and I've learned recently, maybe way too late in my adulthood to accept compliments because it is actually, whether you know it or not, you might not realize it, but it's hard for a person to give you a compliment. So yeah. I've learned somewhere in my mid forties, the only way, the only proper way to answer a compliment is thank you. One of the most effed up things you can do to a compliment is be, no, no, man, it's not like that. You know, I'm just, somebody. and I was like, bro, that person just, especially dude to dude, they gave it's hard for dudes they to compliment another dude. Right. So to slap yeah. their comment down, like, no, no, no. Like you, the Kim Bay, that's, that's not the move, right? You just say, thank you. And, you know, you can say I'm keep working. You can say something else, but just say thank you. So, A, Carlos, thank yeah. you. And, B, I, I try to deliver that to other people because it is hard. You know, when you've been told your yeah. whole life that you ain't, uh, um, whatever. Stuff. <laughs> you ain't Sith. Okay, we're in Star Wars Day. So I say you ain't Sith. Being told your whole life you ain't Sith, like, it's hard to, like, mm. you know, put your weight up and then, Accept a compliment. So, yeah, thank yeah. you, Carlos, and yeah, yeah, I appreciate you. Bro, David always says this every week. He say that he knew. He not knew. Well, <laughs> he, he got to have a saying. He's, he's, he, he's trying to get <laughs> Sylvia and Andrew to do shirts. Like, <laughs> like Eliseo, Eliseo, we live, so he's new. I'm going to get a new shirt. <laughs> that is so funny, bro. Thank you, and I appreciate you for being here. Uh, real quick, yeah. I know everybody here probably knows you, but just in case the replay squad catches you, tell them a little bit about Mr. RK3. Wow. So I am a corporate facilitator. I work with organizations, teaching them how to co communicate with confidence, teaching them how to have powerful presentations. I work with business owners and coaches as well who need to figure out how to create vi greater visibility for their business. And I teach them how to do that using storytelling, especially online these days. So that's what I do now. My background is varied, man. I started out as in the mental health industry right out of college and that prepared me real good for my next job as a seventh grade teacher hold on right one second let me let me make sure i set that up right prepare me good for my next job as a seventh grade teacher okay great all right yeah y'all hear that okay good <laughs> so, 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 so so i worked in um seventh grade for a year man i only lasted a year i don't know what it was i think it was that i was a guy and i didn't know how to handle 
little girls in seventh grade. And it's, it's like it's, it's, if, if it happened to one person, it happened to all of them. You understand, Mr. K, she just broke up with her boyfriend at lunch and all 14 of us need to go to the bathroom. So I'm just kind of like, man, I don't I don't I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so I lasted a year in seventh grade, man. And then I went to high school. I taught high school for eight years of biology and physics. I did science. I was a science professor, science teacher. And then I was an online college faculty for a biology department for two years as well. So inside of all of that, man, uh, I did uh, a stint as a news anchor on a radio station, an AM station. And so this is like while I'm teaching all this stuff is happening, doing this stint. And I do a, I start a couple of businesses. My first business is an online music promotions website. We reach like number three in the US because we've got an internet radio station hooked up to it. And um, after that we do, uh, I, I start a web development company. And then after that, I start an e-learning company developing online training and that kind of morphs into the leadership training and communication training and all of that. So yeah, that's, that's, that's all the stuff, man. So Bruh. the whole RK3 bit comes from my first website, which was k3music.com. And my partner on the site, he used to call me RK3 all the time. So that's where that came from. Dude, that's dope. That's dope. I like the the idea that I'm watching a handful of previous current and previous educators get into yeah. the online course world. And it, I say it all the time. I say this to Mr. Riley every chance I get because I don't want him to be forgotten. Kevin Cox, who is in our yeah. chat, is also a, uh, a elementary teacher or preschool teacher. He's a preschool teacher. Mm -hmm. Um you guys are the heroes, bro. Like anybody that would take yeah. or educate. And like you said, you lasted a year in seventh grade. Uh, you're doing better than David. <laughs> David Hunt had like three, four years in seventh grade. <laughs> Sorry, David. Sorry, David. You, your name Middle was on the screen, not boss. not the business. <laughs> your name was on Listen. the screen, so I had to get you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, so Middle school thing, is not the, the business, thing, man. No, definitely not, because that's when all the hormones are ranging. Kids are on their <laughs> their best behavior. Like, oh no, uh, uh. Yeah, I'm. I'm. My yeah. niece is just hit sixth grade, and wow. she is driving me batty. And I only got to deal with her twice a week. <laughs> she kills mm. me, but yeah. she she yeah. brings all of the smoke to uncle because I can take it, and I kind of will will give her the rope to hang herself that her parents they're there's coddling her, so she actually likes yeah. to spend time with me because I will push her in the right directions and like, you know, give her the nudge that the, the, that she likes, even though she pretends yeah. like she doesn't. Cause if she didn't want, she wouldn't come every time. <laughs> she comes every time and like, okay, Uncle, yeah. now what kind of challenging stuff you got for me next? Right now she's doing uh, right. cell animation on her iPad and making these dope stop animation videos by herself nonetheless. I started her with just yeah. some basic stuff for iMovie and hold oh, now. Yo, she's gonna be working for Star Wars one day doing special effects. <laughs> she's pretty sick. Wow! Way. So it's kind wow. of incredible. The reason why yeah. I wanted to have you on because you know I'm always trying to do stuff to help creators get further in their creation. Now, mm -hmm. all of us, let's just say, longtime creators, or you know, as Elicio likes to coin the phrase, creators on the come up. Like I've been pushing since like Vlogmas. Like guys, if you really want to get good at this game, you have to get good at telling stories, right? And I know yeah. that one of your key pillars, one of your key yep. pillars, is storytelling. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think how, how is the it biggest... that people miss that? Well, I mean, so I think what happens is, especially as we get into corporate, we have experiences in the corporate world, we get kind of grown up, right? The the way that we used to speak around the dinner table, the way that we used to speak with our people at Starbucks or whatever, we kind of feel like that's not professional. It's not, it's not the formal technical way. And so we get grown up and we start to feel like we've got to use these scholarly words. We've got to use these acronyms. We've got to use these phrases that are buzzwords. Oh, the synergy between the technicality <laughs> of this. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> people who talks like that? No, nobody yes. talks like, Yo, like that. So when we, I was we in the startup world, I hate if another person says synergy or innovation to me, I always want to punch them in the face. <laughs> I, and, and it was crazy is my 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 co-working space was called yeah. the greenhouse innovation hub 
So what I would always right. get asked by reporters or whoever, you know, when they would contact us is, oh, let's talk to us a little bit about the innovation. Like what type of um, symbiotic relationships? And I'm like, what? Like, yeah, I called it that because we were trying to like move the needle on there tech you go. You and non-tech the That's environments, <laughs> right? Oh, see, I just did it. And see, you can't help it. We were, <laughs> we were trying to accelerate tech in the non-tech businesses because Hawaii is very yeah. tourist oriented. Hello. But we are having yeah. some problems with our agriculture. Like we are screwed. If there's a, a, a conflagration or a tsunami or something that happens, we got three days of food because we don't produce enough yeah. food on the island anymore. Right. And then the, the food that we do produce gets sent back to y'all in, in canned pineapples and pineapple juice. So, yeah. like, we were like, we need to create food that grows here. We need to solve a, a traffic problem, a housing problem, some medical problems, some educational problems. So our thing was about using all of our nerdery that we all had. We had guys that all of us, like, retired from either, like, Microsoft, me from Apple, mm -hmm. another homie from Facebook, another homie from Google. We were going to take what we know from our learnings and teach folks how to turn some tech things into their businesses in order to elevate what they were doing. And yeah. now hindsight being 2020, knowing better, you know where I think we failed? We failed at telling the story as to why you would want something to be a particular way, right? We forgot to introduce yeah. the troublemaker. We forgot to yeah. introduce the dream versus object reality where they collide, right? Um, yeah. I think people do better when they understand when you place them in the hero's journey and things like that. So now that yeah. I just used all of my storytelling buzzwords, let's pick one. <laughs> yeah. Let's pick. Let's pick one of the arts. Let's start with probably well, the best one. I think. Okay, no, you yeah. say something. You know better. Well, no, no. I was. I was just gonna say. I think one of the things that happens is that we all, I don't want to say we all, a lot of us have been pushed into operating from a space of desperation. And that's kind of why we, we, we forget stories, right? We, we're, we're, we're in the space where like, I got to push my product. I got to push this thing. I got to, I got, I got to push this item. I got, so because, because it kind of comes down to money for a lot of people. So how do I sell? How do I earn money? And we're trying to push products in people's faces. And unknowingly, we all become this, this, uh, the salesman or the salesperson that we don't want to be right. The, the, the greasy, sleazy used car thing. And everybody's afraid of that. So we're like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do I don't, I don't want to come across like that. So let me just give them the facts, ma'am. You know, like Friday said, right, just, let's <laughs> give them the facts and just get, let's give them the product and roll in and you just you decide if you're going to buy it or not. And and that's just not where people are. People ultimately do, peop do business with people they know, like, and trust. And they don't know, like, and trust you simply because you're a nice person. They know, like, and trust you because you seem to vibe or understand what their challenges or needs are. So that's where storytelling comes in. You you know what's what's which is absolutely crazy because you you brought it up. I had this thought in the shower, like right before you know I came down in the studio. Um, yeah, people swear to you that they don't like to be sold, right? But you haven't we sell bought, every day. You haven't bought a thing in your life that you weren't sold to. Number one, and number right. two, you're always selling whether you know it or not. Anyway. Right. When you're yep. trying to explain to the boss to let you handle this project and not give it to Steve, you're selling your mm -hmm. boss. Right. When you yep. when you see Louise at the, at the, you know, at the event and you're like, hey, come on, Louise, you know, we should go out for dinner and blah, blah, blah. Yep. You know, I'm going I'm to treat you right. <laughs> I'm not going to be like the other dudes. You're selling. Yeah. Right. Like even yep. even when the, when the girlfriend is telling the other girlfriend, hey, we're going to go to this spot for lunch over this place you want. Number one, because I'm not about that vegan life. But number two, they got this new <laughs> thing right now. And you got, look, yep. they got they got Bellinis on Sunday half off. Oh, what? Yep. You're selling. You're selling them yep. to convince them to let's go to another. A lot of people assume that all sales are transactional and yep. they're not. Part of story yep. building is relationship building, right? Because you're yep. letting people become part of the hero's journey together, right? Like yeah. The collective, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, I'm, I'm, going through some of the basic story arcs that maybe our guys can activate today 
right? Yeah. So I think most people are the most familiar with two types. Either the hero's journey, because we just watch a lot mm-hmm. of TV and movies. If you see Marvel, you know this. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, Star Wars Day, hello, the hero's journey, baby. Yeah. That's it, right? Yeah. So Luke, from we're going to go back to our Star Wars, 1977. All right, we'll deal with the rest yeah. later. But, you know, Luke running around trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, he runs into all kind of like trials and tribulations. He has no idea what he's doing. Oh, he needs to find mm-hmm. a guide. Boom. Luke, bring your ass over here. Then Yoda, yeah. you know, do this, do that. And then he goes through, find the conflict. The biggest conflict, the number one stunner is his pops. <laughs> you know, if you, yeah. I'm not spoiling anything. I hope all you guys seen Star Wars. If you haven't, no, no, get no, on no. my stream. <laughs> I'm teaching. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should know. Go. Don't come up in my house talking about I don't watch Star Wars, bro. Thank you, Mr. Mm. Vader. Tell it to him. So, um, yeah, like, I guess the hero's journey we'll talk about briefly, but I, I think the one that, again, I'm assuming uh, future pacing. Like, yeah. can you walk us through that real quick? Well, so, I mean, the, the hero's journey is, I mean, in, in its basic form, I mean, we all know the hero. It's kind of like the hero's in his homeland or her homeland. And there's something that happens and the hero has to leave their homeland. And when the hero leaves their homeland, they fight the dragon. And as they fight the dragon, they learn some lessons along the way. It's not just that you that you went and you picked up the sword and you killed the dragon. It's no there. You have to, you have to be worthy of the sword. You have to do all of these things and you have to do these quests in order to become worthy of the sword. And then you're able to fight the dragon. You slay the dragon and then you return home with these new skills in order to be able to teach the people in your space how to slay the dragon if they need to slay the dragon in the future. So you become now the master, the sensei, the mentor, right? So that's kind of an overview of the hero's journey. And there are a lot of different journeys that you you can walk through. I think um, one another storytelling type is something called in media res. And so in media res is like you start in the middle of the story, and you go back to the beginning or you start with the conflict and then you go back to the beginning and then you take it back through to the end. Oh, so, so you mean Tarantino. That, that's a, <laughs> Every Tarantino yeah, movie. Yeah, exactly. Ever. Exactly. Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, so, so, so that's, a, that's yes. another. I mean, there's so many different types. Well, actually, let me share my screen um, or you oh, can yeah. just put me full screen. I'm going to flip no, real quick because you. I just want to write something. So you have a lot of different story types, right? But... Um, and if you want to learn about storytelling types or story arcs, go check out this guy. Uh, let me put my pen right. Uh, his name is Kirk. Uh, Hamlet. Vonnegut. Yeah, it's Kirk yeah. Vonnegut. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, Kirk Vonnegut. That's like the king of story arcs, right? But there is pretty much every story has four main elements, right? So element number one is what we call context. Right. And I'm going to share with you like the five or six C's of storytelling right now as I've kind of come up with them. Uh, The second part of storytelling is the character. The third. Come on, pencil. um, The third is conflict. Right. And then the fourth main piece is what we call the conclusion. All right. So. Uh, the context for the most part, and then this is the true with every story arc or every story type, the context. And so the, the actually I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So let me back up. So the context is really what's going on. What's what's happening currently in your world. I don't know if y'all remember, um, what's it? The, the, the show, uh, the golden girls, right? You remember that oh, show? Yes. I love that show. <laughs> Blanche, yo, so, Blanche, it, girl, Sophia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sophia. So Sophia, every time Sophia started a story, she started out the same way, right? You remember that? What did she say? Picture it, Sicily, 1942, right? She's saying this, <laughs> right? So she's telling, so what she's ultimately doing is she's telling you where, she's telling you when, but she's also jump starting your brain, giving you this uh, video, like this a visual image. Cue. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. so that's so let me start let me pause for just a second this is a mistake that a lot of creators make with storytelling we kind of jump in um with information but we don't give the audience permission to start playing a video in their minds right so it's yeah you're like robert i'm on screen i'm 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 making a video why do i need to make them start another video isn't that distracting no because you want to make connection with people and ultimately every experience that we go through forms this this memory in, in our brains, right? It forms something in our brains. And so um, those experiences are always connected to an emotion. And so as storytellers, as creators, my job is to figure out how I can connect whatever it is that I'm gonna say to an emotion that the the, the listener has already experienced. Yes. Right? And it, so- it, That's bomb. Go ahead, man. No, I'm saying that's bomb. And, and you think about it like, Setting the scene, right? Okay, as video creators, we're talking about establishing shots, right? And that yep. comes all the way back from, uh, what is it? Two households, both alike in dignity and fair of a runner, we yep. lay our scene. Like, bro, I mean, that's, right? That's the beginning. You're, yep. lay, you're laying the scene, right? You're setting up the tension yeah. out of the gate. Right. Yep. And then you're giving yep. that visual preference. Now, at that time, when we were in eighth grade, we didn't know what the heck in fair Verona meant, but you knew it was someplace. <laughs> right. And then yeah. as you go through it. Right. You know, you go from H and grudge break the mutiny. You know, you're like, I don't know what this means, but the teacher would break us down and then she would explain to us, OK, what this ancient grudge was about. And then blah, blah, blah. And then boom. By the time we get into second act, bro, we like, oh, all right, what's happening? What they gonna scrap? Yeah. Oh, what? Hey, man, Capulet stabbed that fool. You know, so I'm sorry, I went to hood school. <laughs> you know, like, yo, man, Capulet bring his ass around my way. He'll get one of these. You yeah. Know? You know, so there, there yeah. you go. Yeah, right. yeah. So um, I'm, let me let me go back to explaining, kind of walking people through this this right. thing again, though. So um, so we got these four elements here, right? Context, care. So the context is is really what helps the people to create the video in in their minds right then you've got characters you you always got to have a character in a story but then this right here this right here is like the most critical part of a story right this is the reason why you watch the movie versus get pissed and give your money back because it was whack <laughs> right true if, story <laughs> true right? story right if if the conflict if the tension as you just mentioned is terrible or predictable then you're like nah just listen that this was this was horrible i'm i want to get my money back listen i don't know if y'all are avengers or uh marvel fans i was so mad at the end of infinity war or endgame <laughs> Right. I was I was yes. so upset. I was so upset, but I was upset in a good way. Not 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 like I wanted my money back. It was like, man, I didn't expect that. Why? Why? Why didn't the good guys make it out alive like all of them? <laughs> right. So there. So that conflict, it was like a dual conflict. There's this conflict in the store, but there's this cliffhanger conflict that sets up. Oh, my gosh, this is, they can't end here. There's got to be something else. So then the fourth part of the story is is the conclusion. And typically this is where. I've got my product, my stuff, my my sales, um, and the details of what this product is. So as you're talking about future pacing, right? Right. The job of this section is to help me figure out what's happening now in my world. And before we get here, how can I imagine myself in that space? Right? So what, what I what I need to be able to do as a seller, as a creator, as a content creator is to figure out without starting here. I don't want to start here. I don't want to start here. I want to start somewhere here because this area here on the left side is really where I develop the emotion. I connect with the emotion of the audience and that if I don't develop that, that doesn't drive them to take any action, which would be over here. So. In the middle of this, there's another little piece here that I call the catalyst. All right? So this so I've I've created the emotion and this catalyst is like a statement that says um that's that kind of pushes me towards that future future character or that future state. All right? So my catalyst is like um 
we need to in order to in, in order to make sure that your house is clean all the time, you need to get a Roomba or you not, before you need to get before Roomba in order to make sure your house is clean all the time and you don't have to do any work. You need to get something that that cleans the house automatically for you. That's like my catalyst statement. And then for this area, you're like, oh, yeah, introducing the Roomba. That, so that's that's the, that's how the story. So the beginning part of this, where where the commercials happen, they're like showing somebody vacuuming the house. They're sweating. They're mad. They don't like this, right? <laughs> they're mad. So then you say you need something in order to not be here anymore. Introducing the Roomba, right? And so then there's another C after this. There's another C after the conclusion. After you take them through the details, then you got to drive them to action. So you got to have you end with a call to action. So when we talk about storytelling, I'm going back to my screen right now. So when we talk about storytelling, man, we're not always talking about like once upon a time or sometimes oh. it's not even about the hero's journey. It's about story structure and using the structure of storytelling to to drive your content or how you create your videos or any information that you share. Yes, I, I tell you one that was that we all got it. Well, all of us have a certain vintage, which means at least me, you, Rob, Corey, we should be there. Yeah. All right. Dude had a rough game. He's walking into the tunnel, head down, holding a helmet, dragging his cleats. Mm -hmm. Like you realize, like the scene is set. You're at the stadium. Dude walks off the field, just dejected. And he's just sliding. Yep. So that's our guy. That's the whole first three parts. And then yep. that conflict is him, man versus man, right? Him against himself. Like, I can't yep. believe I just had this blah, 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 blah. And then the little kid walks around, have some Coke, Joe Green. And then, <laughs> and then Joe drink the thing. And then John, -ga 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 -ga. Yo, Joe Green mm -hmm. is Coke good in the mug, right? Like, almost like one line in the whole entire commercial. Oh, hey, yeah. kid. Things. Okay, that was the ending, right? Gives the kid the jersey. But like yeah. to us at that time, commercials was like, hey, come to Mike's this weekend. We got furniture for sale and blah, blah, blah. It was all of this stuff. That was one of the first right. commercials I remember with not a lot of verbiage. Or the other one yeah. was when the chief is in the boat and he's just, you know, paddling along the Potomac and he looking. I'm I'm from the East, so I thought it was Potomac. I don't know where the heck he was, but he's paddling along, right. and then he's just looking, and he's just seeing all of this trash floating in this river, and he's in his canoe, and then just a tear drops out his eye. No words whatsoever, but you knew exactly yeah. what was going on. A hero in his land, disgusted that his land is jacked up because fools be throwing yeah. beer things into the water, and then here's yeah. his chief, and he's crying. Right. Like, yo, yeah. those commercials, I, from then on, I knew I wanted to be in something in creative space. I think from just a little kid yeah. on those two, those two were the first that got me like into wanting to be here. It's yeah. Crazy. So you just mentioned two, two types of commercials right now. And I want to, I want to kind of make a distinction and really kind of share people with, with, with people, how storytelling works. So there's the, the one that you remembered like distinctly and clearly and all of the different elements of it was the one that went through the story, right? The Joe Green commercial. The other commercial, like, welcome to Mike's or whatever. Oh, I Mike's. Hated the Steelers. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, so, so the Mike's commercial, which is like, oh, we're having a sale this weekend. Those commercials are not memorable, but you remember those through repetition. So it's like the, the terrible commercials that want, that will just like want to slam their product. They repeat them a bunch of times, and that's kind of why you're like, oh, my God, I'm tired of this, right? The, the, the poorness of it is, is, is what kind of causes you to remember it and the repetition of it. But you're not going to remember that commercial in detail 10, 15, 20 years later. The ones that you remember in detail are the ones that connected with you on an emotional level because they used storytelling as their foundation. Yeah, true that, true that. It's funny, too, because you don't really think about it, but I think even the irritating one, like Cards for Kids, everybody from New York knows mm -hmm. the song. Anybody from the East Coast in general knows the song. Even that, right. see, Rob got it. Like, dude, that's funny, because I know that the time of what I said did not catch up to him yet. He's hearing it now, <laughs> and he was already there. Yeah. 
even that, I think the story in that is the song. It's the bounce of the song, right? You're mm -hmm. when you say one eight hundred, you're expecting there to be numbers. The shock is yeah. when they start saying words. So even that, as simple as that little jingle is, it's a story. And yeah. it's, it seems yeah. weird. Like, I don't know how I'm describing this, but in my head, that's a story because everybody remembers it. And I think the conflict was originally you were expecting there to be, you know, more numbers and you got words. And that was not common yeah. at that time. Right. We had gone away from, oh, call me at Lincoln 5739. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Rob, that's yeah, the so, other one. This was after the Atlanta murders. This was sad. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's the, the song is... It's kind of like a trigger point and trigger points are used as in the same way that stories are to connect to another experience that you have. Right. So um, the song and the repetition of the song kind of connects to like what you were experiencing in your living room or in your house or whatever. So, I mean, there's like that's that's why song, songs and music are powerful. I'm like eight hundred five eight eight. Come on. Two, three hundred. Come on. Everybody else. Sing that song. If you if you were in New York, you know, that. look at that. Right. So, so, I mean, all of all of, the ultimate part of this is to connect emotionally. That that's, yes. that's, that's what storytelling is about. It is funny. Like I, I think we get so used to hearing it and we think we become numb to it, but we're not that we disconnect from the fact that we are actually involved in all these stories. Even this, the jingles you hear on yeah. the radio and all of that stuff, like it's all part of a story, right? Like it all gives to us. Mm -hmm. um, some of it is the familiar face or whatever, but like how do you as a smaller creator, right? Mm -hmm. How do you as a smaller creator implement this like uh let's say somebody we're fully aware of let's pick the nixons right so they're going to right. make they want to start telling the story about just making dope stuff hold on <laughs> you can get that yep. shirt available now at docrock.live slash merch <laughs> how, how do you how do you convert something as tangible as the love and care and just like creativity that Andrew and Sylvia put into their products into a story. Right. So, I mean, you start out with the end. So you start out with the end, which is the product itself. But in order to create products, and this is where um, a lot of business owners, in addition to creators, make mistakes. We, we create products that we like without considering what the audience needs. All right. And so sometimes even if you don't know what the audience needs, you got to figure out a way to get them to share that with you or to make a connection. So I'll give an example before, before we get to Sylvia and Andrew. Um, I was in my living room. I was living in the state of Massachusetts at the time. I was in my living room. I'm sitting on my couch and the doorbell rings. I go over to the door and I look through the window and there's this guy in my driveway with this display board, this rectangular display board. And so I go open the door, I go outside and he says to me, Hey, we're walking through the neighborhood and we are having sales on carpet. Here's some carpet swatches. And you, we, we got Berber, we got the Austin power shag. We got this fluffy type and he, and he, he allowed me to feel and touch some of the carpet type. Right. And so we went through four or five minutes of this, I'm touching carpet and he's like, yeah, this is good. And after that's done, I open my door to the house. And I show him that my entire house is hardwood. <laughs> so, so he spends <laughs> five or six minutes talking to me, slamming me with this product, having no idea what my needs are. Right. Didn't ask me any questions about what my needs are. So what is it that Sylvia and Andrew or any other creator can do? First off, figure out what it is that your audience or the people that you're talking to need what drives them what challenges they have what's their pain what, point what's their well sometimes it's not only the pain point sometimes it might just be something that lights them up mm, they're why they're, they're right uh, yes they're something they're, that excites so their them. peak could be their pain or their passion it right. doesn't necessarily have to be their pain okay right right yeah so sometimes it's not something that's missing because so so let's so let's go back to um the early 2000s if I say the word, the two words, MP3 player, Real. most people immediately think iPod, yes. right? Yes. 
But Apple wasn't the first company that nope. came out with MP3 Re players. Real was on I, it for like three years, but they just did dude, a bad job at it. Yeah, I, I there's a real. I, I had, I had a Creative Zen. <laughs> the Creative Zen was a real rebranded. Same thing. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I had, I had a I River H10. Um, yep. I had and 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 check this one out. Um, I had a Microsoft Zune. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> right? Did you get the watermelon but, color one or the brown one? It was the. It was. The, I'll say it this way because it's on your show. It was the doo doo brown one. <laughs> there you go. Doo -doo, doo -doo brown. That was my. No, it's funny though when you think about it. Like most people don't. Most people barely even remember that mess, right? Dude, right. D Diana right. and I was having a crack up the other day because I remember asking my parents for that Sony, that yellow and white Sony Walkman uh, Discman. Mm -hmm because I had to run for track, you know? And so when you had right. a little CD player, first of all, you just got the CD player. It was already spoiled, right? But he was running mm -hmm. for track and trying to get my workout on, and then you hit a bump in the beginning, and then Tevin, Tevin Campbell would be like, can we, can we, can we? can we talk, talk? I'm like, Mom, can, Te Tevin got Tourette's. Come on, Mom. And so I told her that I needed a CD that had to skip. This lady went out and bought me a cost. Bruh. I, I was about to tear the house up, <laughs> bro. I was so mad because if you got that cost, it was because it was at Kmart. Yeah. And they let you put it on layaway or something. But that cost, there we go. Hey, Tevin still had Tourette's. He couldn't talk yeah. for a minute. It took him five minutes to get the dang song out. <laughs> it kept skipping. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so what was, if you remember this, I mean, I know you're coming from Apple. What was the difference? What did Apple do at the beginning when they released this? to make it different or to make the connection to people different than all of the other companies? What did they okay, do? So two things they did that I think that made it actually iconic, actually funny name. There's a book mm -hmm. called Iconic, which speaks of this. By giving the white headphones, you were giving mm -hmm. the purchasers of iPods the opportunity to tell the world that I'm special. I got white right. headphones. Those cords were seen as a badge of honor for a little mm -hmm. bit. Then they became seen as target, but we're going to forget that part. Sorry, Manhattan. <laughs> so in the beginning, yeah. it was considered a badge of honor. That kid is in the know. That kid is smart. He is a person of taste, a person of elegance. So all of the above, that initially started. And the other thing, bringing in cool people like uh, George Clinton and, you know, yep. all the other singers to show that even they represent this because at the time people were sort of anti MP3 because it was the idea that it was going to harm the music industry. So even before yep. he got to iTunes, he had George Clinton and other musicians showing that the, the iPod was the truth. Yep. Yep. So, so, so here's the connection with, with story here, right? So the other companies, they started out with the product. They started out with the detail. They started out with the conclusion. Hey, here's this device. It can hold 3,000 songs on it. Hey, here's this device. It can hold 5,000 songs on it. Apple didn't reuse that approach. Apple started out with what was the thing that lit people up? What did they need? And and in what, from what you're saying, affirmation yes. was a big piece of that, right? So they still do it Apple to this day. instead, right. So Apple instead was like, you know what? Um, we, we have, do you remember that time that you were listening to, to George Clinton in your car and you felt this way? You remember that P-Funk album? You remember this album? You remember this? They made these connections to people. And so now as they make these connections to people, bringing through the nostalgia and your, and, and, and all of those different experiences that you've had now, then they say, oh, by the way, we've got this device and it just, it just so happens to hold 5,000 songs on it. Yes. Dude, they, they are honestly, I don't people say, hey, just because I work there, whatever, a fanboy, whatever. Right. They are the best in the business of not really giving you specs that don't matter, but just telling right. you what the feeling is. And at yep. the keynotes and stuff, they'll talk about specs because they're talking to us. And the press gets right. mad because the website just shows two curves and like the numbers aren't even right. I'm like, it's not mm -hmm. even, it's not meant for you, bro. No matter how much you hate yep. them and you get mad at them because you're the nerd on YouTube and you want to tell everybody that there's, they're jacking you. They don't care what you think because you mean nothing to them, yeah. honestly. Like where, yep. where they get their, their juice from is from what the clients are buying, right? Everyone yep. goes, there's no way. 
that they're going to sell a two terabyte iPad for twenty four hundred dollars. And yo, know, them joints were sold out in fifteen minutes. I can't even get mine in yep. July. So all of y'all that yep. thought, oh, nobody's going to buy a twenty three hundred dollar iPad. Trust me, them joints were sold because my dummy fell asleep, and when I woke up, they was out of stock. So yeah, that and the other thing I wanted to touch real quick is remember this. Right now, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a Sophia picture. This, okay. Step one, take it out of the box. Step two, yeah, plug it in. Step three, oh, there is no step three. Like right. best commercial ever made, bro. Doesn't mention anything about the computer. Don't talk about USB ports. Don't talk about they removed the serial port. Doesn't talk about you know anything. That was it. Because back then, setting up a computer was an all day experience. You so let's, yeah, like so let's break you. that down. So so let's break that down for a second. So and, uh, if we talk JD about rubbing the, it in. <laughs> <laughs> so so if we if we talk about that, right, from from a storytelling perspective, it's kind of the the setup of that is this this you've got the box, right? Okay, cool. All right. The the who's the character? There's there's somebody that's holding the box. So implicitly, the character is you, or it's the character or the person in the in the in the in the commercial, right? Third step, conflict. What's the conflict here? Okay, step one is this. I got I got to go through some steps. Step two is this. St uh, I got to go through some steps. Step three is. Wait, there's no third step. What's the conflict there? Oh, you had an experience in the past where you went through setting up something. And it sucked and it was hard. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is frustrating. I need a higher professional to do this, right? Especially if you're like 50, 55, 60 years old and you're like, dude, technology is going so crazy. Can I get something simple? That's the conflict right there. So they're like, okay, boom, conflict. Let's go. Here's the device. Honestly, that's what's making, you can't <laughs> win right now. Because everybody who has experienced OBS at some point in their time opened this mess up. And they're like, yeah. okay, it's missing some things that OBS has, but when I turn it on, my face is there. I don't have mm -hmm. to adjust the bit rate. I don't have to adjust any keyframes. I, I don't even have to put in the freaking keys. You yep. hear me, fam? I don't even have to put in the keys. Bro, the yep. rest of them joints, you got to go get the key from YouTube. You got to pick it up. You got to paste it. Yo, all they do is, what's your YouTube account? All right, cool. You're done. Boop. And And next thing you know, you're like, Hey, is this thing live? Can y'all see me? How's my audio look? You know, <laughs> now when you start doing all kind of weird stuff, that's on you. But like for the average yeah. person, and I now I know better what our base looks like. Bro, most of mm -hmm. the people turn the joint on, call a friend. Brrr, hey, can you be my friend today? All right, cool. Let's go. Like yep. it's it's mind blowing. So yes, that's who. Bro, you're yep. bringing heat. Bro, if you, uh, Rob put it in the chat a little bit ago. But if you guys are not following the man, you are slipping. Because I'm telling <laughs> you, bro. I'm telling you. Like, appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. This, is, this is super valuable. Because I think everyone's out here. And, and you know, I'm guilty. You know, I'm guilty of the gas. Oh, Errol, by the way, I want to say thank you. Uh, Robert was saying something at the time. I didn't want to in, in, in mess up his flow because, you know, I, I have bad ADD, so <laughs> so um, there you go. There's the link, guys. Make yeah. sure you are following the man, because trust me, it's That's so easy for link. us to get. Just just, huh? just huh? go to youtube.com forward slash Rob. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I blame uh, the other Rob for that. I'm t I'm teasing Rob. You do it, bro. The the thing that that matters to all of us, right? We spend a lot of time chasing gear. We spend a lot of time trying to get better at techniques and stuff. And at the end of the day, your clients don't necessarily buy that. Will it make you look better? Absolutely. Um, yep. Is it easier to get past the pain points of selling when you look a certain way? Absolutely. Uh, beautiful people will always sell more than ugly people. So ugly people, we gotta do, us folks, we gotta be better with our stuff, is what it is. We'll always be that way. It's human, human nature, fam. Get over that. Right. But the ability to hold a conversation, a conversation at a table and leave a person engaged is probably the best skill you will ever get. The yeah, best skill you absolutely. will ever get. Every time... My friends get to repeating crap they heard on the internet about 
how like, oh, at family dinner, we have to ban phones because our kids always want to look at their phones instead of talk to me. You're talking about you, bro. You were talking about the way you feel because nobody's paying you any attention. How about we do this? How about you get better at crafting? A story craft, that is. How about you get better yeah. at having conversations? How about you get better at listening to what they're trying to tell you? And maybe they would talk to you, right? Yeah. Maybe the reason why they don't talk to you is because you don't listen to them, right? So I tell people, stop blaming social media. You just suck at communicating. Listen. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that, right? <laughs> Nobody want to hear that. But I tell it to I, I tell my sister a lot of times. It's not that she don't want to talk to you. You ain't saying nothing to her. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, what they used to say yeah. in the song: "Oh, you talking loud, but you ain't saying nothing." Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when yeah. when I tell people all the time, if you don't believe me, show up at the bar, and we sitting at the table, ain't none of my friends on their phone. Cause right. I got some to say, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right. something, and then, and then like pull you in, right? And that does, yeah. It could just be a general conversation about what's happening with the Raiders draft. Is you always suck so bad in the draft, um. But you yeah. know, hey, this Red Sox in first place. Hey, <laughs> oh boy, thing. come on, no, hey, no, 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 no. Yankees two and oh, a half yeah. games back. I will feel better when it's They're like coming. seven. They're coming up. I'll, I'll They're coming it. up. I'll take it. Yeah. But you know what I'm, I mean? Yeah. I think that's the thing, bro. I think that people get caught up into the minutia but are missing mm. the key element to all of this is being able to tell stories but i guess how do you not fall into the trap there's a way to always be selling but not be selling but how do you not fall into the trap of selling with the story let's put it that way well i so i mean i think you said it at the very beginning we're always selling, right? Uh, whether, I mean, some people are good salespeople, some people are poor salespeople, but you're always selling something. Either you're, because um, we're, we're, all the, we're always either influencing people to do things that we vibe with or believe or to do things that we don't vibe with or believe, right? So you use the example of convincing people to go to a restaurant or choosing, making a choice. We're always influencing. Uh, Robert Cialdini has this book, Influence. If you haven't read it, go check that out. Um, Dave Car Dave, 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 Dale Carnegie, great book, right? Great. How to Win Friends and Influence People, right? You're always influencing. And so I, I, I want to switch the word. People think that sales or selling is, a, is like a cuss word, right? They don't want to sell it. Okay, fine. Take 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 cause take selling out of it, and let's just use the word influence, right? You're a creator. You're wanting to influence people to consume your stuff. You want to influence people to subscribe to your YouTube channel. You want people to influence people to hear what you got to say. How do you do that without selling? Well, um, I think I forgot who says this in the group, but they were like, "Your vibe brings your tribe," right? So Elysium. number one, yeah. Bring, bring, bring your, yourself to the game. One of the things that, one of the reasons why, why Doc has a tribe or people that are around him is not just because he's knowledgeable, right? But he also brings his experiences to the information that he shares. Like you, you, you hear Doc say, okay, listen, um, this y'all got to go get this Rolls headphone amp, right? <laughs> you you got to go get, you got to go get this. You got to do this. Doc doesn't just say, go get this. He's, he, he follows that up with, Oh, listen, when I was in the industry or when I was at Apple, when I did this, here are some of the things that we saw with this and we used to use this, but it didn't work. And so this is why I recommend this one. Uh, I didn't even realize to do that, but I guess I definitely do that. You, um, you do. Um, you do all Because the I think that's the providence thing to make sure that people listen. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't it's, know if it's, that's it's, an imposter it's, move or just like, look, man, you don't have to listen to me. There's proof behind this. No, it's not the imposter move. It's people. People make decisions based on emotions. All things considered, right? If if it's apples versus apples, and they're both exactly the same, you go to a car dealership, and you have two vehicles that are identical, right? But there's one that has a salesman in front of it that says, you know what? 
Do you remember that feeling of the wind flowing through your hair <laughs> when you <laughs> when you put the top Funny. down? <laughs> right? And and so you got he's like, listen, these two cars look identical, but this one right here, this one right here is gonna give you that feeling again. And so you're like, oh, okay, I feel it, I feel it. So you buy the one that makes you, that has the emotion or the story attached to it. So you give information to people, doc, all the time, and then you attach a story to it, and the stories remind us to go through our mental Rolodex to like where we were working or when we were experiencing certain things or the time when I try to hook up this camera or this capture card and it sucked and it didn't work and it was glitching and it was like black and green on the screen. And so your stories provide that connection for people. That makes sense. When I, when I, when I sold cars, one of the things that I often would try to do is convert all of the specs into an emotion because I'm a car guy. I actually love specs, right? The specs is a thing, yeah. right? And I remember like even when people are like, well, I can't test drive it, whatever, but what's the difference between the LX and the DX? Well, the mm -hmm. LX is when you got your suit and you got your girl, you know, you're finna go out to dinner and you pull up to the valet yep. and then, you know, you walk out, you pimp your tire real quick and you toss the dude the keys, right? But the mm. DX is when you jump in the whip and you want your cheeks to touch the headrest when you step on the gas. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> so you just did it. You just I mean, did it. That's, so, the kind of, it, that's the kind yeah. of stuff I would say to folks, right? I'm like, yo, this is a Corvette for broke people. <laughs> that's yep. like, you know, and they yep. be like, what? I'm like, straight up, bro. This is a Corvette for broke people. Why you say that? Hey, mm -hmm. can you go for a test ride? Yeah. Okay. Cool. We hit the back street. Yeah. Dude, that thing is quick. I go, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, you're not yeah. going to floss in it, but you can definitely like peel the stick. You put a sticker on. Glue that sucker down because yeah. the stickers is coming off when you hit third. <laughs> you so, know, let, so. Let, let me drop something right now. Let me drop something right now for people. You said that is a Corvette for broke people. One line. There's an entire story in that line. Yeah. Right. And here's 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 what it is. Stories are often implicit. They're not always explicit. When you tell an implicit story, you can use one line to connect to an emotion that people are already thinking. So when we talk about starting a video playing, you say a Corvette for broke people. People immediately now go into their minds, okay, where am I? Am I broke? Do I fit into broke? Do I remember a time when I was broke? What, you know, how did I feel in this car? So they're, so they're setting up that context, right? They're putting themselves as the characters and the conflict now is um, which category do I wanna fit in in life? Yeah, right. Right. A lot so of, a if lot I of purchases wanna... we make based on wanting to fit, whether we like it yep. or not, whether you believe you do it or not, a lot of stuff you buy, you buy because you're yep. trying to get in where you fit in. There's a whole bunch yep. of y'all that got M50s because you thought it was going to make you Sean Cannell. <laughs> Sean don't even use that. He uses a C300. He uses a camera oh, oh, that's Marshall like Fox. Come on. 10x. No. <laughs> But there's a bunch of there cats that brought that thought and they was going to be Sean Cannell. They just did. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. a bunch of cats out there making uh, memes on Instagram because they think they E.T. the hip hop preacher. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, man, it, it's it's ultimately, I think, at the end of all of this, it's as creators, we can create stuff for ourselves all day just because that that feeds us and we and we geek out off of that stuff but if you are a business person and i don't i don't even want to say a business owner if you are a ceo okay uh, getting out of C, getting out of business owner mindset where you're doing everything and moving into ceo mindset right if you are a ceo and you want to share with people or you want to move that idea or grow your idea bigger how do you connect with the experiences and the emotions of people? That's it. Bam. That's the secret. That's that's what storytelling is. Bam. And you know, it's funny. I watch people that don't think they do it, do it on a regular basis when I see their when I see their channel, right? Yeah. I'm I'm watching Kim do her thing all the time. And people are like, why do you watch Kim? One, because it's interesting, because I'm a Japanophile myself. But two, it's interesting for her to share with other people her journey into her love for yep. Japanese culture and, you know, have females that now see her as an arbiter of information. Like if mm -hmm. I want to go and I want to buy 
the the outfits that will give me the the Japanese culture thing. Like she's up and I'm down here, so let me look up to her. Let me ask her these questions, and she'll give like stories about. Okay, so I I spoke to the person that created this, and then we was talking about this and that, and they said this is coming soon. So you know, mm-hmm. get your pocketbook ready. Like you got to be ready because when they drop, it drops quick. So make sure you know right. when when to be here at this time. And I'm like. Kim, you're holding a master class on how to engage with your people. And then you come in yep. the group and be like, I don't even know how to engage with my people better. <laughs> I'm like, you do it. Like you're murdering it now. I, I, I don't even con- listen to Kim. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they're con- you're already so deeply connected with your audience. I could tell by the way they yep. react to her. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And then it's funny. And I know this because she'll say, hey, okay, I got to say what's up to Doc. You know, like he's one of my mentors, a coach or whatever. And then they'll start bigging me up. And I'm like, none of these girls don't mean. And why is a dude six foot two fifty over here trying to buy Japanese dresses? You know, people might think I'm a little strange, but I'm just coming to support Kim. But just yeah. because of her influence over yep. the people that watch her religiously, they would turn around and be like, hey, if she says dude is cool, how you doing? You know, and I there think a lot of people disconnect because they don't understand even the tribe that they're already building. Like you already got a yep. dope tribe, right? Yeah. Even some of us, if you come in, if you come into the ecamp community and you fire up your camera and you're just tested, and like six, seven people just show up every time you turn that thing on, you got a yep. small little tribe in our own little community, right? That's it. It happens, That's it. right? If we turn on our stuff right now. Like most of us who are here will show up for each other because we just do. And then Keith will be right. in the comments cracking jokes soon. And then Limwell will be in the comments <laughs> cracking jokes soon. And so yep. you're already tribe building people. You're like already tribe building. Yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, man. It's some powerful stuff, bro. All right. It's so so dope. I, I'm, I'm going to get this Caledini one because I don't think I read this one yet. Like everybody that starts out, they know about the Donald Miller book. Um, yeah, and that's and that's a good book. I think there's better ones out there, though. Well, I mean, it, I think th- it's also dependent upon the audience. I mean, Donald kind of came at the right time because we were focused on product, and he was kind of coming around the same time. Simon Sinek was with his start with why start approach, with why and is the so word, he kind of came. Yeah, so he kind of came around that time. I was like, listen. Um, we're we're in a technolo- we're in a technology age where people have so many options available to them. Literally, you can go on Google and type in alternative two and then follow it with any product and you come up with a bunch of stuff, right? So what's gonna differentiate you from everybody else? It's your story. I like that. It's the story I, I of your I use the alternative two trick all the time. <laughs> I never thought yep. about using it for something like that, but I use that a lot, bro. That's funny. That's yep. why I, I want to know what the what the uh, I guess sort of the antithesis is, or what other people are mm-hmm. recommending to find out what they're. Yeah. Because a lot of times you see something, you're like, I want to buy this, but before I buy this, I wonder what else is out there. I always do the alternative two search. Yep. Yep. Bruh. Yep. Okay, so we I like you know me like I like to give folks homework, right? So Keely's out here. <laughs> Besides cracking an, another delicious bottle of Froze, what is a homework that Keely or Rob or Kim or David Hunt, you know, Corey guys, what is a homework they could put in to practice in say their next two or three videos with storytelling? Uh well, I think the biggest thing is to ask yourself What is the emotion that you want to create in your audience before you click record? So you got to know, do I want them to be sad? Do I want them to be reflective? Do I want them to be super excited? Do I want them to be mind blown? Like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this. Because a lot of times what what, what a lot of us do is we kind of create our, put our content calendar and we're like, okay, topic, 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 topic. Okay. But what is it that you want people to feel as they're watching it? And so that's going to that's going to drive a couple of things. It's going to drive the content that you put in it because you want it to come at it from that audience's perspective. But it's also going to force you as a creator to think outside of yourself 
and bring your own office authenticity to that to that to that emotion because you don't want to just say it because you feel like that's what people want to hear you want to you want to say it you want to do it you want to show it because you have experienced it and you know what either that exact thing is like or something similar to that is like so bottom line figure out what it is that you want your audience to feel and write that down before you start creating the notes and the script for your video. Bruh. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Keely. You know, Keely, I appreciate it. you. You got the hustle culture, like in a big way, but in a good way, like not just moving fast for no reason. Um, I like the fact that you're down for the homework and you know, you tend to put whatever we talk about in class or in yeah. extremes. Keely is one who tends to put action behind it ASAP. And even if it's Love frustrating, it. she'll come and cuss you out in the community after, like, why you put me through this? But she'll do <laughs> she'll do the work. So I I thank you because yeah. I know Keely will put that in the in the practice because she's just about this life, which is dope. You know, I I think one of the the things that has me the most jazzed right now, um is getting people over this hurdle that, you know, Instagram is just for millennials or kids or TikTok is just for millennial or kids or like yeah. you know, even YouTube is just for, because like once you hit to that certain, I don't give a F vintage, you are the mm -hmm. perfect person to share what you've been through. And like yeah. the, like if I could do this all over again, I would because those folks, Kevin, you haven't got there yet. So right. like when you see the sign coming, you'll be like, yo, I remember way back when, you know, Doc or, or, or Robert or, you know, David or somebody told me that this sign was going to come. And when they say turn left, yeah. look at the sign and be like, nah, fam, I'm going right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like you could yeah. literally change somebody's lives by sharing the stories you already have, you know, and you guys are holding it on some whacked out fear thing or I'm not enough thing. And that makes you stingy. I'm sorry. I'll be yeah. a hole. I'll tell you that makes you stingy. You have valuable right. information trapped in those gray hairs and pains, all of those joint yeah. aches and crap we deal with. That is wisdom that you need to impart upon those that come before you or after you. Sorry. So even if you're yeah. sitting here watching this and you're in your mid twenties and you're not telling the early twenties, like fam, bruh, I remember looking at the whole world. Like yeah. when, when, when Terry Jenkins said she wasn't going with me to the prom, I remember being crushed. Like, wow. but it ain't nothing. You find out, yeah. I posted yesterday. You ever looked at something really scary and thought it was going to be the end all be all? And then you do it and you then look it back and say, I can't believe I was worried about that. Yep. Remember that yep. feeling every time it happens because you bring it up, you recall, you recall that every time you look at the thing that's coming up tomorrow that you're afraid of. Because chances are, if you wear a silly gray, no, chances are yeah. it's whack. Yeah. You're scared for no reason. Yeah. So go back yeah. to the last time you looked at fear and was like, shut up player. I got this and do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me, you said something important just now. And I, I, I kind of want to share this quick story so that um, it can really make the connection for people. One of the things you just said was that, um, if you don't share your story, you're literally depriving people of some stuff. So I, I was, as I was teaching, when I taught physics every year, I would have this same experience. I would teach a physics concept and I would ask the student, did they get it? And the student would be like, I don't get it, Mr. K. And so I would go into my mind and I'm like, okay, let me think of another way to explain this. And I'd explain it the second way. And the student would say, I don't get it, Mr. K. And so I'm like, man, what's wrong with this kid? I, let me let me go and let me think about a third way to explain this. And I explained it a third way. And the student would say, I don't get it, Mr. K. And so almost every year, the same thing would happen. Some student would come from across the classroom or sit beside them and lean over and say, blah, 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 blah. This is this, such and such. And the student would be like, oh, 
oh, okay, I get it. Why didn't you say that, Mr. K? I'm like, literally, I just said those words verbatim <laughs> to you, right? <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I can say something and somebody else say something, but the person that is looking to receive that information may not be on frequency or on vibe with me, right? My voice may not be assigned to that person, but somebody's voice is assigned to that person. You have no idea whose voice, who's, who's assigned to your voice, who's assigned to your specific story, right? So if you don't tell the story, if you don't tell the experiences, if you decide you're gonna lock them up in that crazy box you call a head, right? What's going to happen or what's happening is that you're literally robbing somebody of the ability to transform, of the ability to 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 do something different, of the ability to become better in their space or maybe even of the ability to live. So you got to tell your story. Bro. You never know who your story is assigned to. That's crazy. I like how in the example you changed it from the opposite half into a student because that way you don't get in trouble. <laughs> that happens in my house on a regular basis to yeah. to Carrie or her sister or to moms. I didn't say something about five, six, seven times. Nope, 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 yep. nope, nope. Somebody else will say exactly what I said. Like change none of the words whatsoever. And it's like, oh, yep. oh yeah, okay, we'll do that. <laughs> it's uh, it's one of those things. Just like you know, you tell your kid the same thing over and over again. Your kid ain't trying to listen to you because you're dad, and you can't possibly be cool. You know. Yep. Uh, it's funny. Recently, my niece was on about something about clothes for school or something. You know, again, she's just getting at that age where kids now they care what they wear to school. It's not like I got to wear my dirty shoes. Like I got to be clean when I roll up in the campus. Right. And she was asking me because I'm the person who I, I became an Adidas nut at some point in time. Mm. I, I got off the Nike train. I became Adidas. And it's funny. The impossible is nothing. Probably what did it for me. It's such a, Slow. I, mean, I can't believe I myself, me, I'm too sentient, too smart to fall for a slogan. That slogan gets me to this very day. Like impossible is nothing is my is my jam. Like I, I right. think I live and breathe that. So I support Adidas for that cause. To me, that's more valuable than just do it. Because a whole bunch of people yeah. just doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's not the same thing as impossible is nothing. Yeah. But. Um, so my niece, she was coming to me cause you know, I'm the DJ, I'm the one with the followers and you know, social media, whatever. So mm. she's going to ask me what's cool. And I'm like, man, you should ask your moms. She's like, what? I'm like, moms is a fashion maven, bro. She's been to Paris. She's worked for Louis, uh, Loewe, Celine, uh, Celine, like, you know, Ferragamo, Chrome Heart. She's wow. worked for some of the biggest brands in fashion. Like, why are you asking me? You better talk to your moms. Moms knows fashion? Like she was <laughs> she was like deeply surprised. She sees her mother every day in drip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But to her, it's not I, my mom can't be cool. I can't ask her about nothing fashion. And I was like, man, you barking up the wrong tree. I go to moms when it's time for a fashion advice, or if I gotta buy something for, you know, Auntie, you know, my my lady, I'm like, I'll call your mom and I'll ask her first, you know, make sure that I get the right color Mark Jacobs. Like, this is the right one. You know, and right. she's like, mama. And I'm like, yeah, your mama dude. like in, in the Island, she's known as one of the top fashion folks. And she was mm. like, Oh, and so my, uh, my sister-in-law called me up like half crying. She's like, that I can't, it's like, she came and she asked me and she was so enthralled. And she was like, mom, you lived in Paris before. And she's like, yeah. She's like, I didn't know you was like in the fashion. Uncle says you're the best at fashion. And of course, whatever uncle says is <laughs> gospel. And there so we go. it, it's funny that that's how sometimes I got friends right now who would murder YouTube, but they don't because I'm the one that told them they should do it just because I'm their friend. Right. And they don't see me as the YouTube coach, but I got damn near 700 of y'all to listen to me every week. So yeah, right. that's why it's funny. Very few people from Hawaii are subscribed. They still see me as the DJ and the radio guy. Like they have no idea that I'm right. out here doing this. And it's funny, I bump into like two or three a week that was like, yo, man, I heard you closed all the businesses and you do two full time. And I'm like, yeah, isn't that a kid's thing? I just want to pop them right there. <laughs>
<laughs> I was like, bro, you lucky yeah. you're still not at the boxing gym. I would cross you right now. And that's the ignorantest thing yeah. you ever said, especially you, because I know the stories you have or the ability you have or the skills you have mm -hmm. that you could be sharing with the world. But because of worrying yeah. about the rest of our friends, you still out here holding it in. Yep. You know, and so what yep. you just said resonates tightly with me. I'm going to like get those old cars from Hallmark. And I'm going to record what you said, and I'm going to send it to people as like random Mother's Day cards, even though they're dudes, because they had the chip that I can record it in the card. <laughs> that's, okay. you know, got to keep it dirty. Got to keep it dirty. Yeah. All right, fam, let's ask you, how do people get to be a part of your storytelling tribe? Like, I think more people need to hear this, bro. Yeah. You can go to storytellersgrowthlab.com. You can just join up there or you can just search, search Storytellers Growth Lab on Facebook and just ask to join the group there. Right now, we're actually doing what we call the Confident on Camera Challenge, where we're, where we're teaching people, we're taking people through five days, learning how to um, show up on camera, how to get past the nerves, how to create structures or use storytelling structures that are gonna improve your confidence every time that you get on camera. So that's that's the easiest way to do it. You can go to confidentoncamerachallenge.com if you wanna hook up with us there. We, we Today's what, two days, Tuesday? So this is day three, so we only got tonight and two more days after this. But yeah, storytellersgrowthlab.com or you just go to Storytellers Growth Lab on Facebook and, and let's hook up. True story, man. I'm, uh, I'm like, just funny. I said that true story. This was super dope. And Rob, no, I'm Love not it. switching to New Balance and freaking compression socks. Rob said, New Balance, you have to switch to New Balance. He <laughs> wanted me to get that that Velcro phew, wide foot joint. Like, yo, nah, fam. Yeah, nah. Like, there's some New Balance that's cool. The hipsters brought him back into life, but nah. <laughs> that's just funny, Rob. Mm. Robin's David's best. talking about ASICs. <laughs> oh my goodness. And Tommy said, you got to rock them sandals. You know, uh, before we go, Tommy, you're a good person to put this on because one of the dopest things, just to show you the power of story, and I'm glad Tommy is here because Tommy can, if you watch any of Tommy's videos, you get it. Magicians always are telling you a story while they're doing what they're doing because story Absolutely. is so powerful you get wrapped up in the story, and next thing you know, he's like, oh, so did you get that? And you're like, yeah, that was dope. And then he goes, hey, what time is it? And you're like, and then he'd be like, <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? Go. So, like, I, I had a dude do that to me in Vegas at uh, at Comdex, yeah. which is now CES. And he was telling the story. He's doing all this stuff. He's shaking my hand, and he's explaining to me, like, how he's going to tell me this magic. I had no idea this dude was snatching my watch. And yeah. he got the whole watch off my wrist. And like stuck it in his pocket, and I'm like, where the heck? He, I'm like, where the hell, my watch go? <laughs> I didn't even see it happen. But I learned later that their storytelling and the way that they're bringing you in to the fold, yeah, just really helps. So, yep. I mean, definitely, guys, go out this week and create a video that's like story arc. Period. Just start with, even yep. if it's not unless unless intentionally take the selling part away let it sell by itself just go yep. in and tell your tribe a story let them know something right so for like for like robert it could be what i learned from teaching so great that helps me teach ceos now because ceos is wow. just yeah. as stubborn is not more stubborn than seven grade females <laughs> <laughs> that's an idea let me write that down let me actually write that down that's a good <laughs> you know one. what i'm saying that's guarantee more stubborn and hard to work with than seventh grade females because they have the i think i know what i'm doing because i'm the ceo complex right. and you know young kids they can't be told nothing because they think they grown like it's a thing yeah. right so chris stop it with the saucony <laughs> you guys are killing me oh, with these boy. shoes over here he oh, said crotch with like socks Oh my, bro, you guys just broke my, I had a beautiful train of thought and you guys broke me with Crocs with socks. Oh my God. That's, that's just too funny, bro. <laughs> that's too funny. Okay. I'm done with you guys. Yeah. Anyway, your homework is to go make a video this week talking about story. And if you need tips, I literally just dropped a video today on the LG.L channel, not this channel, about five tips yeah. that you can use for crafting stories. Um, Love it. And it's just real simple stuff, you know, not, it's not rocket science, 
But yeah, like everybody should go out and, and work on the story video this week and then post them up in the group so that we can, you know, all take a peek and see what you're doing because I, I just look at I look you know what matter of fact, Kevin's uh Kevin's old lady, like that's exactly what she's been doing for her channel for this whole last, you know, little bit. She's been telling her journey about going yeah. through her process and sharing it with the world and Bruh, you probably like breaking people's heart on a daily basis to get them started and like let them see that hey, it's time for me to get back in here, you know. So yeah, I appreciate you, bro, for coming through. Um, I got to get back bro. to Thanks Ad World invite, Conference. Man. This was dope, man. Yeah, yeah. When, this was this was book, overdue a lot of fun. Coming man. out, I'm waiting for the RK3, the book, the manual. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I gotta do. I probably gotta do an autobiography like that. I mean, I got a few that are already out, but um. Yeah, I got I gotta do the RK3 autobiography story. There you so go. yeah, that would be a good one. Uh, designer.com just talk into the thing and then make the book for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 All I, right, yeah, gang. I, I, I messed with di designer in a little while, but yeah, I gotta check it out again. You guys know what to do. Don't forget we got class this weekend. If you haven't already done so, you can just jump over real quick to the Buy Me a Coffee page, sign up to be part of the class. And then, of course, big ups, big ups to my man RK3 for coming and hanging out with us today. You can find us anywhere. Uh, you can find both of us in the group always making trouble. Uh, and, yeah, the <laughs> troublemaker is one of the yeah. story arcs. Look it up. <laughs> yep. uh, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee is like the champion troublemaker story uh, is what it is. But, gang, I really appreciate you guys. Hey, Elaine, sliding in. Good to see you. Uh, wait. I learned. You know what, Corey? <laughs> Oh my God, I'm done. I'm done. I get no love around these parts. I'm tired of y'all. I'm going back to work. That was just way too funny. You guys are the best. Love I love it. you, gang. I appreciate it. Thanks, Robert. Thank you.